Hello, everybody. I'm CoinDesk reporter Lee Quinn, and welcome to Crypto Across Emerging Markets. My co-host is Emerge CEO Lucia Gallardo, joining us from Honduras. Hey. Hi, everyone. <laughs> So I'm really excited. We're going to be hitting a lot of different areas of the world today. And we're going to start out by talking to hip hop artist Akon and Acoin Project co-founder John Karras. Thanks, Lee. Really exciting. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today, guys. Yeah. So, How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're doing all right. Great. What How's quarantine, quarantine going? Partying? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So well, you can see it. I'm in a house full I, of people. You can hear the echoes. So, those are some legitimately amazing LED lights in the background. So right? I trust oh, thank what you're you. saying. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. So, Akon, I want to start with what may be the most basic question. Why is it that you decided to create a cryptocurrency, Acoin, rather than just start a company that uses Bitcoin? Um, well, actually, because my, my biggest thing was to create tools for Africa to be able to utilize. Um, my goal was always to empower entrepreneurs there, the younger kids. You know, as you know, Africa is built on a population under 20, uh, 21 of over 70 percent of the population. So it was a young generation, very vibrant, and they needed platforms of their own. Um, so ultimately, I wanted to create a, a coin that allowed them to be able to utilize it, you know, in such, an, in, in such a way to where they can utilize uh, their talents, their, their resources, the official products, you know, something to fuel their businesses. And we always was in a position where the, the dollar, the money, and the, the, you could say financial instruments in Africa was always been very unstable. So when blockchain came on board, I felt like that was the perfect platform that would allow the citizens and the, the youth around that time to be able to have a financial instrument built around the blockchain system that gives them full transparency and also give them the tools they probably need to trade around the world. Okay, so if you wanted to build an African native asset, where is the team located and, and who are the team that are building this ecosystem? Team is global. They're everywhere. Right. Uh, US, uh, US, Europe, Africa, Asia. Um, we've got folks working 24 hours a day on different aspects of this from uh, tech to PR to integration. Uh, et cetera, but a lot of activity these days in uh, in the US, Asia, and Africa. Gotcha. And John, I'm really curious to hear as well. I believe you guys are planning to distribute the token through an initial exchange offering. If the intention is to empower Africans, which is a very, very admirable goal, why was it that you guys decided to go with that route rather than, say, airdropping it like the Project Handshake did? Well, there are going to be a number of ways that the token gets in the hands of the people. The right. IEO is just about raising money for the, the company and growth and tech expansion. Uh, the first place that people will really get and be using the token is uh, in a big utilization case in Kenya that will launch just slightly after the IEO. But we need to have liquidity and we need to have an access point for, for people to go in and out of the token as it is utilized. So Absolutely. both things are happening simultaneously. What's uh, that? Just a little to can we? I said, can we jump into that bit? Um, I'm curious about sure. these ways in which you are going to make it really accessible because that's essentially what we're talking about, right? Accessibility of the of technology itself, and we're talking about you know parts of the world where between 70 to 80 percent are either without a phone or with a feature phone, not a smartphone. And so, what are some of the right. strategies around access and education that you've got uh, planned for for rolling this out? So we start with a big utilization case in Kenya, in Wale Medical and Technology City. That utilization case will be able to be used on $15 flip phones, not smartphones, uh, for the basic digital payment solution. Uh, we've gotten huge excitement about uh, the initial launch of that. We thought we'd start with a couple thousand people, and we've already had well more than that sign up, and, and we're still about six weeks away from that uh, initial launch. Uh, and we'll learn a lot from that first thing. And then we've got a number of other utilization cases uh, that we're starting with. But but there will be bounties and airdrops and other things. Um, but the initial uh, way that, that people on the ground will be using it is a digital payment solution, a way to help bank the unbanked. Um, as, as we've talked about at a lot of different events lately, uh, our core concept is that we're supercharging prepaid sell minutes through a, a proprietary atomic swap 
mechanism. Users can go freely between a prepaid sell minute, a basket of fiat currencies, a number of cryptocurrencies so that it, it allows them to take something they're using as a transaction tool and have went way more features with that. And that will, again, first be used with uh, thousands and thousands of users in Western Kenya uh, starting in about six weeks time or so. Right. And just so you know, like the population of Africa, everyone practically has a phone. They may not all be smartphones, but I know we know over there's over 500 million smartphones circling all throughout Africa. And most people yep. that have a smartphone always back it up with a dumb phone. So ultimately, we know that from the distribution aspect of getting directly to the consumer will definitely be through the cell phones and mobile transactions. Mm -hmm. And now even today, it's become a norm for Africans to be able to utilize their cell phones to make basic payments, purchase certain things. And it's gotten mm -hmm. to the point where actually cell phone credits have become a form of payment. So this is the reason why we created the atomic swap, because the average person or villager, for, for, the, for instance, will go to an actual market to get fish or vegetables. But instead of actually paying fiat currency, they're, they're trading cell phone credits. And this is just how unstable the dollars was over in that area. So we wanted to create that atomic swap to allow them to be able to transfer their basic credits into actual acorns and utilize it as real currency and trade it on a day-to-day -day basis. Totally. I think and they, future phones are, future phones are the so way just, to go for sure. Right. And just so you know, there, there will be some custom uh, phones in various levels that have acorns wallet loaded into them from, again, simple $15 flip phones. Uh, to smarter phones, a lot of them locally built. That's some of the next wave of things that are coming. Um, yep. Gotcha. Um, Aiken, I know that Senegal is a place that's very close to your heart. It's where your family is from, that you've spent some time there as well. And yeah. I understand correctly, it was the president or the prime minister of Senegal who literally gave you a plot of land with which to establish a city. I'm curious to hear from you how it was you went about seeking partnerships, whether that's with the government or whether that's with local uh, nonprofits or investors or organizations, who are you partnering with on the ground when it comes to implementing the strategy? Okay, so I actually had to buy the land. It wasn't given. I wish it was given. <laughs> <Yes>. oh. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. That you know? is a, yeah. a misnomer. What, what, I, what I can say is that the government is giving me full support as to helping me build infrastructure on the land, you know, the basic roads and, you know, the connecting points with, you know, plumbing and electricity and things of that nature. So they are fully involved in what we're doing and they understand how much, you know, tourism and how much impact this city will be bringing to the country. So they give me a hundred thousand percent support on everything that we need as far as licensing and, you know, pretty much getting things moving as far as implementation. So everything is actually all flowing together. But I think when all the parts come together, it's going to definitely be in a whole, you know, like a whole nother level, you know, because we're grabbing partnerships from all over the world. And we really want to make sure that the African Americans and others that really wanted to invest in Africa, there's an actual lane and an actual, you know, uh, access point to be able to invest. And I know a lot of foreigners want to invest in Africa, but they're, they're not really uh, familiar or, or, or fear in how their investments will be handled and so on and so forth. So we want to make sure that our system would, would be very easy to be able to merge within the systems that they're used to, whether you're in America or in Europe, and be able to, you know, quantify what they're putting in and how they're going to be able to get that out. Gotcha. And you're using the Stellar blockchain, right, as the kind of technology. What was it that attracted you guys to Stellar as the solution? Oh, my goodness. I can say so much about Stellar. I mean, they're, 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 I mean they've been a really, a, you know, I can say uh, a, a dream come true for me because we kind of looked in a, we kind of looking through the same lenses when it comes to Africa. You know, they were already trying to market within Africa. They already had platforms and systems working within the continent itself. So a lot of the things that we were building or trying to get to the point to build, they had already figured out. And then a lot of the great ideas that we were actually coming on board, they were able to help, you know, build the systems to actually make it all work. So, you know, we kind of saw eye to eye as far as what it would take for Africa and a lot of underdeveloped countries to be able to properly manifest through this new futuristic development. So they were kind of on the same page as we were. And the well, speed of transactions, a lot of the technology that Jed's built into it and the support and teamwork of his entire, uh, you know, C-suite staff from, uh, from tech to marketing to design, they've been dream partners for us. We love them. Absolutely. John, uh, Akon, one line on you know what you what you think about where Acon's headed. It's where Acon's headed and its feasibility. Oh man, where I think it's headed, I want it to eventually be the you know the the main financial tool that you know citizens of Africa can utilize 
from a trusting point, you know, understand that this is a tool that they can trust and it can be used anywhere they go in the world. It will collaborate with any other financial systems to be able to utilize for everything they need to do on a day-to-day basis and feel confident about it. And I would just put it as frictionless mass utilization that overlays existing systems and help to enhance the opportunities offered to all all folks everywhere, but focusing in on Africa mm-hmm. first. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, both of you guys, for joining no, us today. Thank you. Absolutely. And thanks, Lee. <laughs> thank you so much. Next, we're going to be talking a little bit about Bitcoin, right?